aquí. We gonna find you. You can't run away. We gonna find you. Can't run away. Good morning. Good afternoon, y'all. Welcome to this place we call the mental house with me. Your illustrious host, whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, thank you for being out there and thank you for uh, stopping by, right? Okay, let's do a little housekeeping. Y'all already know if you got any uh, emails, any uh, information that you want to send directly to me, please go to Mental House TV at gmail.com again that is mental house tv at gmail.com or you can hit me up at artist for freedom dot com artist for freedom dot com all right you guys listen here y'all already know this guy prince uh, the um, the Duke of York, right? What's his name? Prince Andrew has been hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein and the rest of the freaks. Um, and it is his time to be brought to some type of reminisce of some type of court or some type of justice, which y'all already know what happens with the rich and powerful Caucasian in this country. Um, they don't seem to be have to be held accountable, and that just the, the, that's coming to an end because the earth can't be balanced right with all this inequality, and it's going to have to even itself out. So, fortunately, bit by bit, we're going to chisel away at injustice and inequality, and replace it with a system of justice. And equality. Otherwise, it's all going to hell in a handbasket. So either um, either way, uh, this guy, Prince Andrew, says he can't even remember meeting this girl. Okay, he is going. You know what is I that that didn't happen. Although. He's hired, they've hired the, what they call the Rottweiler of, uh, of, of attorneys. He's got a dream team of high-powered U.S. lawyers to get this girl's claims thrown out of jail. I mean, thrown out of court. I'm sorry. Which is pretty, kind of, which is sad. Away from the rigors of public life cocooned by the gently unadulterating cargoms of Baltimore, the queen ought to be enjoying a well-earned rest from what, even by the standards of her extraordinary life, has been a difficult year. As if losing the Duke of Edinburgh, her companion and trusted advisor through seven decades, wasn't enough of a blow, she had to endure the toxic attacks of her grandson, Prince Harry, against his own family and subsequent a fallout. The poor woman must sometimes feel like she's presiding over a crutch full of psychopathic toddlers. <laughs> the stress on someone of her age is intolerable. If they weren't all self-obsessed in grace, they might feel ashamed of themselves for putting her through all of this. But there's not much of a chance of that. The worst part is that the biggest man baby of them all, of course, her favorite son, Prince Andrew. Prince Henry may be a petulant pain in the you-know-what, but in many ways, Andrew presents an even bigger, even more insoluble headache than the Duke of Duchess of Woke. Because while at least those two have ostensibly turned their backs on the royal life, well, the bits 
that don't suit them anyway. Andrew remains very much within the fold. <laughs> you like that word, Tracy? <laughs> He's within the fold. But indeed, his response to the worsening situation in the case of Virginia, uh, you know, y'all, that girl that bring the charges, who is now suing him in the American Civil Court for rape and sexual abuse, has been a burrow even deeper into his mother's skirt. There are a few sites more unattractive than a 61-year-old man who still relies on mummy to help him clean up his mistakes. Last week, Andrew and his ex-wife, Sarah Ferguson, with whom he is very close and who is fiercely and rather admirably loyal to his cause, joined Her Majesty at Balmore, where he remains protected by the seclusion of the 50,000-acre estate and insulated by royal privilege. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what they do. They're a bunch of cowards. You know, go hide they self, installated himself now. And uh same thing we got with Donald Trump, right? I mean oof. Just uh, just makes me sick. But in the real world things are not so peachy. Representatives for Mrs. Goofrey now claim to have successfully served him with legal papers having left them with a police officer at the prince's home in Windsor in a bizarre game of cat and mouse that initially saw the documents being rejected, then acknowledged. His lawyer have since claimed that, in fact, papers were not properly served and have expressed the intention of to boycott a court hearing Scheduled for 9 a.m. <laughs> the next week sometime. Before a judge in Manhattan. Oh, no, 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 no. Once again, a prince who is not man enough to stand up to his responsibility has let others, in this case his security staff, take his flack for him. See, this is what these people do. And those of y'all who are their flunkies, man, and their little minions and flying monkeys, Y'all should take notice of y'all behavior. As to the rest, it's one of those legal standoffs that only highly paid lawyers really understand. A series of loopholes within loopholes that would tie most ordinarily people in knots. But the upshot is that Prince Andrew is clearly determined to do what he has done right from the start of this case. Refuse to engage in any sort of grown-up or meaningful way. He's just not going to do it. He's never had to. And it's time. Really, that is the problem. Because while the accusations themselves are undeniably very serious, it is arguably the dismissive way that he has responded to them and the whole question of his friendship with the late Jeffrey Epstein that has done the most damage to his reputation. What the hell? Donald Trump was friends with him too. You got they used to snort cocaine together, allegedly. I mean, used to party with him, allegedly. Although you see video tapes all over. Did they scrub him off the internet yet? He clearly high on cocaine. Fuck out of here. Anyway, right from the start, and this saga has been rumbling on a nine for a decade now. He has reacted like a spoiled child when challenged, indignant that anyone should dare question his judgment and behavior, shocked that anyone be so bold as to stand up to him. The arrogance, the pompousness. You see this stuff? This is why all this stuff got to be broken down, got to be torn down. All these narcissistic, narcissist, crazy uh, institutions that house these type of people they have to be exposed for what they are. People that have 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 not been made to have any accountability. 
take no responsibility and who have been given the green light to do it. And that in this society has to stop. Either everybody going to do it or nobody going to do it, damn it. None of us can really claim to know the truth about the circumstances of Goodfrey's 20-year encounter with the prince. But one thing is crystal clear. When it comes to being a 10-eared, um, tingled, I mean, entitled Toph, who has handled the whole thing appallingly, then Prince Andrew is banged to his rights. At every turn, his character has been laid bare in a way that is extremely problematic. Not just for him personally and for those defending him, but also for the queen and the royal family as a whole. Because this was, of course, underlined all too clearly during that crash, that car crash news night interview. His complete lack of self-knowledge was astounding. It was also painful, painful to watch. I didn't get to see it. I don't know how many of y'all did get a chance to see it. How many of y'all even give a damn? Um, but these dudes are, uh, are, are um, freaks. And they're not above the law. And they need to be brought down just like Jeffrey Epstein. I want to know where was his funeral? Where did you do? What did you do? Where was the memorial service for him? Where is the body? Is this some Jimmy Hoffa type of... Man... Okay, you guys. I'm sorry. Uh, let me let me stay. I I digress. I have to stay on task. His complete lack of self knowledge was astounding and painful to watch. So tedious is his relationship with real life. He doesn't even realize how oddly he comes across. But perhaps the worst thing for me is the fact that he claims he has no recollection of ever even meeting Goofy, despite there being clear pictures. Clear pictures, evidence to the contrary. You don't sound like Donald Trump. It speaks volumes. People that grow up with this type of arrogance, what kind of mental cases they become. And for those of y'all who follow them, who defend them, flying monkeys at his best. Goofy, I hope I pronounced her name right. Geoffrey contention that she was groomed and trafficked by Epstein for his own pleasure and that of his powerful friends. In other words, she was not treated as a human being, someone's daughter or a young girl with hopes and dreams and feelings, but a mere object of lust, a plaything for the enjoyment of others. Andrews claimed that he had no recollection of that pretty starstruck 17 year old whose waist his hand is uh, wrapped around in that infamous picture only serves to make him more not less complicit in all of that his denial only reinforces the idea of a wealthy untouchable all powerful elite that consider itself above the law if he can't remember Goodfrey it's not because he never met her. He clearly did, as the picture shows. It's because she was utterly insignificant to him. Just another evening's entertainment. Just a bit of arm candy from nowhere's vehicle to be discarded once the fun had worn off. Just one of the countless girls who, unlike his own two daughters, not so far off in age, didn't matter. And that, I'm afraid, is as damning as a stain on his character as almost anything else. If Goodfrey's claims are true, he had a pivotal effect on her existence, whereas she had about as much impact on his as a paper cup. Mm, 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 mm. Heartbreaking when you think about it. He tossed her aside like a used tissue. She carries the scars for life. It's that arrogance, the cruelty that, that stands out. Even more so, since if there's one thing his mother, the queen, is renowned for, it's her, it's her kindness. 
and lack of sense of entitlement. So wherever he gets this character from, it's not her. My guess is that the chances of Prince Andrew ending up in an American court to answer the charges against him are vanishingly slim. But the court of public opinion, that's another matter entirely. He's already in the dock as the evidence against him as a decent, fair-minded, honorable human being is stacking up with every misguided move that he makes. There is only one way out of this mess now for Andrew, and that is to face the music on his own like a man and for once in his life without dragging his poor, long-suffering mother down with him. This article was written by Sarah Vine for the um, Daily Mail. I'll see y'all.